visualize thyself in the presence of the shaykhs and that the ruhani be in front of you and that we're at Rosa Sharif in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and allow them to cook you from within. They're going to enter with a light into the heart and into the soul to begin to heat up and to fill with light and energy and to push out every darkness and badness. And these not the Sharif are are much deeper knowledges than the Arabic salawats because these only Allah have an immense amount of understanding and they spread it and taught it through the nat. And by reciting these we are calling upon its realities. We know it, we don't know it, it doesn't matter. These are haqqaiqs that enter into the soul, it's best to Look at the books that we recite, we have them all online through the apps. And when you read from their kalam and what they've written and when we recite it, it's the most powerful amal that you can do, wa dhikrullahi akbar. This is all under dhikrullah because every durood is Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Everything is always dhikr of Allah first. More powerful than any, any amal, they don't let me say it because then people will go out and quote it, but most powerful amal. Because every other amal, amal you do is based on intention, right? Your salah, it doesn't count until Allah looks at the intention. What was in the heart of the servant at that time when they were praying, what were they thinking, what was their character? All these actions and, and the usul that we do, we do it out of imitation because Allah commanded it. But you shouldn't put any pride in it thinking it's counting because Allah said, we didn't have an accounting yet, this is going to be an auditing process. So why are you so happy about that? So you did it, that's why all the, their writings is, I came to my actions and I negated them. Not that I don't do them, somebody may hear wrong. No, no, we do what we've been commanded out of love. But we didn't put a value on it. We didn't say, oh, do you know how much I pray? Do you know how much I gave? Do you know how much I have zakah? Do you know how much I went for, for this and for that? Or how much I did that or this? And they put a value on what they've done of their amal. And they come to teach us in our life that just you do the amal out of love. Negate it yourself before Allah has to negate it. Ya Rabbi, I don't put any value in these things I'm praying. I don't even think my heart is connecting. I think I have anger within me, I have bad characteristic within me. And that's the difference between regular people and people who study with awliya. That they were taught to negate yourself. Don't go up, but go down. Tell yourself, I'm nothing. But before Allah has to tell me I'm nothing and then Allah has to punish me to show me I'm nothing, I punish myself. Say, Ya Rabbi, why, why, why you have, we have to be rough? I'm, I'm nothing, I'm nothing. I got my head to the ground. I don't need to be humbled by your punishment, I just beg your forgiveness. So, ilahi anta maqsudi wa ridat maqlub, ilahi anta maqsudi wa ridat. So the first step of the tariqahs is begging Allah forgiveness and His ridah. I'm begging your forgiveness, I'm seeking your satisfaction and then my shaykh has taught me my actions are going to be judged and I, I don't need to have you to judge them, I can look at them and I know there's significant issues in my actions. And so when I negate my actions <clears throat> We say every time in Jummah, dhikrullahi akbar. Why? Because in this remembrance and in these associations, these are voluntary, these are not mandated associations. We did the namaz which was fad, but we came to these associations out of love and muhabbat. Say, Ya Rabbi, I'm coming for the love of you and the love of whom you love which is the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and I'm coming only for this love. 
and as a result of this love I'm going to do everything for that love. Then only I'll come and say, can Allah judge love? And why would He judge love? Love and muhabbat is not something that is judgeable. You have a level of love and you're supposed to compete. Prophet described in deen competition is good. But in competition in what? In muhabbat because there's no down, it's only up. Allah doesn't come to love and, and not love from dunya, we're talking love of akhirah, love in the way of the Divinely Presence, in service of the Divinely Presence, love in the way of Sayyidina Muhammad How Allah want to, to, uh, to judge that type of action? So there's no judgment. So when there's an amr that has no judgment and it's just a matter of blessings on how much we can get blessing, then the sky is the limit. As much as you're praising, as much as you're doing zikr, as much as you're serving, as much as you're attending, only Allah come into our lives and teaching Allah is just dressing and dressing and dressing the soul. And if you're doing something that can be immediately dressed upon the soul, versus waiting for intention, that's why these awliya and all, all these re religious realities were gained from the people of dhikr. There's not one of them that was not from the people of dhikr. There's not one wali or pious person that you come across and say, you make dhikr so no, I pray a lot. So? I give Lord zakat, that's how we got sainthood. No, all of them are ahl dhikr because they know that's not the secret. The secret was in their, their dhikr, their remembrance, their good character, acts of love, khidmat and to serve in the way of Allah And the Sahabi, how they beat us into every service, they gave their life for Sayyidina Muhammad They gave for Allah but they didn't see Allah. Many people think they represent Allah They gave for the love of Sayyidina Muhammad What we know of Allah we see in you Sayyidina Ya Rasul Kareem. What we learned of compassion we see within you, what we learned of generosity we see within you, we give our life and death with you. That's khidmat. As a result of that, that station can't be achieved by anyone. Because we denoted that place to see Prophet and be amongst and to give our life and service. But you can. There's 124,000 representatives of Sayyidina Muhammad are upon this earth. And there are the roses of his rose garden, Ula Muhammadi, that the fragrance of their fragrance is a beatific smell from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad You'll know them by how they talk and how they celebrate and how they spend everything in the way of that love. And as a result they make the deen to be real. They go and make a khidmat, be of service and serve. That service is nothing compared to your dunya. You work all day long, they don't care. Has nothing to do with Allah, has nothing to do with them. The service in the way of Sayyidina Muhammad is from Samina wa Atana. I heard the call of my Lord and I'm here to obey. If one can reach that and have istiqam and firmness in their life, istiqamu fi tariqat. <clears throat> was in Surah Jinn we gave that tafsir, hold firm to your tariqah. They, oh, these crazy people sometimes say, there's no Sufi in the Qur'an, what are you looking for? The whole of Qur'an is realities of Sayyidina Muhammad And tariqat is mentioned in the Qur'an and Allah is istiqamu fi tariqatat, hold firm to your tariqah, your way. And that perchance Allah will shower His water and oceans upon you, His reality. The ma'i of the heaven, the water of the heavens are the realities that pour within the servant's heart. It's not achieved by years of 
praying that barely got your ticket into paradise. It's not by years of uh, fasting, it's not by years of any of these amal. It's by years of muhabbat and ishq and as a result of that love they entered into an ocean of sincerity and they gave their life in that way. And that's when they even reach the nazar of Sahabi Kiram, Ahlul Bayt and Nabi They look at their souls that they never tire in the way of service to Sayyidina Muhammad And they don't need to. What they have of uloom is unimaginable. What they have of what Allah has dressed of stations is unimaginable. But they do the service to bring people to the love and the ishq of Sayyidina Muhammad Because the hadith is, if you bring one person, if one person comes new to Islam and accepts Islam, all the treasures Allah will give them of their acceptance and forgive all their sins. So imagine when Allah and Prophet is teaching about somebody coming to Islam, the rewards of accepting that Islam. What about those whom are bringing thousands back into Islam? That they revive their religion by watching, by participating. And all those that are coming fresh and new into Islam. If the one whom is accepting Islam is getting the reward, imagine the one whom bringing them. He's like a jewel hunter, right? not hunting jewels for dunya. But the wealth that Allah has given to them is unimaginable of paradise reality. Because they're bringing to the, the greatest that Allah wants, bring them to my love and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad what could be more beautific than that? And that's why they come and they teach us that all that we are doing for dunya, it can make your life more comfortable for here, it has no value in hereafter. So to be firm, to be balanced in life, live a life of service. With my time, with my ability, with my breath, with my physical hands and strength, with my money, with my knowledges, whatever Allah gave to me, I bring it back to Allah And that's taslim and submission. Ya Rabbi, you gave me all of these and I bring them back at your threshold. How can they be in the use and in the way of the love of Sayyidina Muhammad to propagate that love, to elevate or Proclamate the immense reality of the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad It's tashrif, how much Allah loves that reality. Then we live a life of service and blessed life. Because the one whom is in service to Allah has a love and ishq for Allah Allah loves that servant. And as a result whatever that servant does in that way, becomes blessed and many think they can stop it and they cannot. Many people tried not to help, not to attend, not to do things. And what Allah wants, He don't need any of them. If I'm behind you, all the money in the world will be at your feet. If I'm behind you, I'll open every door that's shut. If I'm behind you, I'll send all whom I want to receive that barakah and that blessing because they don't know what it is. I'll send whom I want. And that's why we said in those hadiths last night, one dirham in the way of a mawlid, what type of paradise Allah opens for that servant? One, one dollar. One bite from the food of Milad the Nabi what type of blessing Allah and ajr dresses upon their souls? And these are the hidden treasures when Allah says that, you know, God works in mysterious ways. And these are the mysteries of Islam, that to love and to find Allah I'm a hidden treasure wanting to be known. So where is Allah going to be known?
in the heart and in the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad And when you love that reality, قُلِنِ كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِ Will you hibbukum Allah? And I forgive all your sins. If Allah loves the servant and the servant is in love with Sayyidina Muhammad how Allah want to punish him? Means that he's going to begin to clean them, clean behind all the wreckage of their past. And as they fumble, they're not going to be masoom, they're mafuz. That they'll make mistakes and Allah will begin to clean it. Why? Because He doesn't want them to be embarrassed and put in an embarrassed state in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad So it means these, these realities and this ishq is so immensely powerful. So then imagine sitting and praising, what type of lights come to you that all these nasheeds what type of angels are accompanying the recitations? That when you recite and there's no intention needed, it's coming straight with power. And that's why when in the association of authorized people, it's coming through their souls. There's an energy, a power, people are cooking. Because as they recite every letter of that recitation is filled with malaika. Coming into the soul and dressing them, blessing them, filling them with lights and energies, raising them, raising the level of their frequency to an angelic frequency. As a result they have weaponized sound. When we don't understand heavenly realities, look to the dunya what they did with sound. Now they can play a sound. Make blood come from your ears and begin to shatter walls and, and shatter things. They weaponize the sound. They understand its reality. Shaitan understands everything. So Allah had that from beginning that the praising and the reality of sound and frequency, what type of power it has. So what frequency you want to make? We praise upon Allah and the secret in Durood the Sharif. So if I want to praise, what's the zikr of Allah Salaam Alaikum Nabi Oh but you know. <laughs> no. Close. But Allah, when we say Allah, this is from Sayyidina Muhammad the dhikr that Prophet brought for us to say is, say Allah. Why? Because you leave mushrik and come to oneness. But what did Allah say my dhikr is? In Allahi wa malaikatuhu yusalloon ala nabi. So Allah's dhikr is to praise upon Sayyidina Muhammad and when you praise you say, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa la ali Sayyidina Muhammad Because you had to say Allah. So there's a secret that Allah's zikr is Allah's praising upon Sayyidina Muhammad giving energy to that reality, giving all its haqqaiqs to that reality that you can't even contribute to it. You're just taking the blessings between Allah and Allah <laughs> praising upon Sayyidina Muhammad because you heard, you came and now we're being dressed by the immensity of its power. So then imagine then this majlis and anytime you don't feel good make salawat on Sayyidina Muhammad read from these nats and these, these uh, salawats and all these, they're all du'as, all power. And as soon as we're reciting the energy and the frequency is coming. Every time shaitan and we lower our frequency, when we hear bad, we talk bad, we think bad, we're around bad, that's when you, you, you overly think who you are and you're constantly in dunya and you don't realize how bad has grabbed you so bad. You're not the wali, awliya they're mafuz. 
Allah has put within their system a continuous burning. They're burning all the time. They have a zikr moving all the time in their wujud. And that's how Allah guards them wherever they go. They begin to burn and burn but that's not regular people. Regular people everywhere they go they become a product of where they're going. Oh the people you see all of them took a part of you and put their worst part back onto you. We're energy beings, you, 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 we're light beings. Don't look at the body as if it's some sort of a shield. Your soul is all over you, your light is all around you, your body doesn't contain anything. So imagine all that light is moving all the time, everywhere it's going it's picking up all the negativity of people, all the sadness and doubts and difficulties of people and by the end you're loaded with all of these difficulties. And when you think highly of yourself you don't recognize how much difficulty has been put upon yourself. But when you're humble you, you realize, oh my gosh all these difficulties I have to shower, I have to wash, I have to make my tafakkur, I have to make my connection and I have to watch the zikr. The zikr Thursday, Friday, Saturday night, one of those nights or all three of those nights is a washing machine. As soon as you log on then the nazar of these awliyaullah they're reaching deep into the heart. It's not an empty association. The light and the frequency is going out and grabbing and moving. If you think Wi-Fi reaches you and this from Japan or the Motorola modem, you don't think what Allah made is more powerful than Wi-Fi and the ability of the soul to reach another soul and the energy of a soul to move into the energy of another soul? The television is sending signals into your head, that's why crazy people they put aluminum foil on their head. Look at that crazy, they kind of sense the television waves are coming, radio waves are coming and they think that's their protection. But this knowledge of awliya know that, everything is an energy in here. And those are all electromagnetic frequency which is under their feet. The strongest energy is the soul. And that's why when they talk, they talk from their soul. Every word that's coming out or no word needs to come out, the energy of the soul is moving and dressing everything. And the madad of their shaykhs behind them, Ahlul Bayt behind them, Ashab al Nabi all around them, imagine then the frequency and the power of that soul coming out. Yansurukallahu nasran aziza. Can anything come against Allah's Aziz? No. Since you can make as many walls as you want, this light's coming through and obliterate everything in its way. And when it hit the soul, Haris alaykum bil mu'mineen huwa ra'ufun raheem. But bad with anything bad. And how many shaitans are standing in front of that frequency? The light of Prophet when it come, obliterate these shaitans, they hide from it. It goes through every type of wall, every type of what and it goes softly right into the soul, into the heart of the believer and whomever Allah wants to believe. They may not even know they're a believer, they just accidentally tuned in. And if Allah wants the frequency begins to enter in. So it means these way of light and these associations of light are something that are understood only by a few. And the importance in our life in these days now is frequency. By tuning in, having a good system, you're watching it loud on YouTube and putting yourself into that energy, putting it into the association, meditating for your connection, that I'm connected, I'm listening and I'm asking for the frequency to come and begin to shake out every bad vibration I've accumulated throughout the day, the, the week, the month, however long you've been disconnected. If you don't wash it with this energy you become overtaken. Oh my Lord I have been overtaken by shaitan and all his difficulties, wa fata abwaab as sama wa mayamun hamila. And I'll open for you the gates of heaven 
and pour waters of abundance upon the soul. It means Allah is not leaving us to be overtaken by shayateen. But the practices and the teachings they have to be done, they have to be done with the humility in which I'm a humble servant, Ya Rabbi I'm nothing. Illa yanta maqsoodi wa ridat matloob. Ana faqeer billahi ta'ala. Ana abduk al ajis wa da'if wa miskeen wa zalim wa jahad. I'm nothing Ya Rabbi but for under your grace and your rahmah. And as a result we begin to learn the realities of light and energy and its importance in our, in our existence. And that's just to burn away the bad. Imagine when you're burning, 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 burning the bad and you can finally rise to an angelic frequency which the vibration in which you vibrate puts fear into devils that are around. Because you're vibrating at an angelic rate, at an angelic frequency and there's a frequency above the angels. Because the angels made sujood to Bani Adam and to Adam and to the reality of Bani Adam. Because of the knowledge in which Allah would put within their hearts. So it means the capability is something unimaginable. But who will take a path in which to rise to that occasion? We pray that Allah on the greatness of Mawlid and Nabi that make us to be from Ashiqeen Ameen. With, our, with our abilities, with everything that He's given to us Ya Rabbi, that we become Ashiqeen and bring that light and that frequency into our hearts and to increase it, every day increase it so that we have the happiness of Sayyidina Muhammad upon us, that he looks to us and that he feels that happiness for us in our character and in our actions inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. <laughs>